Okay, this is week 10 of the Lost Confederacy channel. Here on this channel, we focus on the first acronym of the uh, term ADOS, which would be American. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up by reading the uh, 12 steps for the 13 week practical program of action for each American descendant of slavery. Step one, learn about the estate or estates your family originated from. Step two, who established that estate? Step three, what nation and confederacy had jurisdiction over that area prior to the European? Step four, ask all nonprofit organizations you attend, what's your position on reparations? Step five, they either support it or they don't. No support, no money. However, if they support it, then immediately children and adults need weekly classes free of charge about steps one, two, and three, and field trips to ADOS landmarks in that city, county, and state. Step six, don't support European holidays for the remainder of the 13-week time frame. Step seven, avoid spending money with any small business that doesn't hire your people, gas stations, nail salons, subways, ETC. Step eight, all businesses need operating cash. Spend money with American black businesses. Step nine, all other groups rely on our energy and operating cash to survive. Set the trends of making other groups follow our lead and support our clubs, services, products, and entertainment. Step 10, the US government is bankrupt. The Federal Reserve prints money, i.e. quantitative easing. It also burns money, i.e. quantitative tightening. The US dollar hasn't been backed by gold since Richard Nixon in 1971, the Gold Standard Act. The government operates off the full faith of its citizens to pay debt and taxes. American descendants of slavery no longer have faith in the US government. This is why support will be altered, stopped, and redirected. Step 11, teach your kids one hour a day about their history on this land. A, have them learn about an American inventor. B, have them know about our heroes. C, they should know the European that conquered the estate you live in. D, they should know the nation of people prior to European invasion, militarily and culturally. Step 12, practicing these steps will educate us on the land we're claiming, America, and attaches us to the history and laws of the US government. Every estate American descendants of slavery live in should have steps one, two, and three advertised via social media, radio, and newspaper. This in 13 weeks, one fiscal quarter will bring us together for our common cause. So that is the 12 steps. Uh, Chief Blackcoat, you're gonna do the American Inventor. Yes, sir. I'm Chief Blackcoat. Today's inventor is gonna be Kenneth J. Dunkley. Kenneth was born December 29th, 1939 in New York, New York. He is the father of the 3D viewing glasses. Patent number being 4810057. Mr. Kenneth uh, received that patent number for the 3D glasses on March 18th, 1886. Right now, today, he is currently the president of the Holospace Laboratories at the University of, give me one second. I just have that pulled up. Ooh. Let me go back. Bam, you, wow. I, I didn't, I was about to say Miami, but I wanted to make sure, but fam you. Um, so that's what he's on today as far as his current studies. But yeah, uh, that's the brother Kenneth. He's the inventor of the 3D glasses. Again, I'm Chief Alligator. I will do the Dr. Carter G. Woodson quote. And today I will do quote, I'll do quote five, quote five. Real education means to inspire people to live more abundantly, to learn to begin with life as they find it and make it better. But the instruction so far given Negroes and colleges and universities has worked to the contrary. In most cases, such graduates have merely increased the number of malcontents 
who offer no program for changing the undesirable conditions about which they complain. One should rely upon protests only when it is supported by a constructive program. Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Uh, someone want to do the maroon historical points? I got them. And the legal definitions? I'll not go about two. All right, so the maroon historical points. Number one, was a person escaping slavery, seeking freedom, or breaking the law? Number two, providing unity and a strong defense came first. Number three, maroon leaders were first and foremost military figures. Number four, maroons established guerrilla warfare, <clears throat> playing sharp sticks and thick grass. Number five, maroons knew their European enemies' language, defense, and plans. Uh, now on to the legal definitions. First definition being American, a native or citizen of the United States. Number two, descendants, one who follows in the bloodline of an ancestor, either lineal or collaterally. Number three, slavery, a situation in which one person has absolute power over the life, fortune, and liberty of another. All right, there's actually uh, another definition. That is the old or the mm. outdated legal definition. So the last one will be prisoner of war. Uh, mm, okay. Are you able to? I don't have that one. Let me. Uh... So I have prisoner war pulled up. I got it for you. Okay. If it pulls up for me, because we went with a more older definition, legal definition of American, and we added prisoner of war. So the older version, because they changed it, which again, when you're playing Lord over people, then you feel like you can do what you want to do. But the, ori right. the original legal definition of American is a native. And it may not pull up for me. So we'll just have to push forward. Let me see. Let's see if I can get lucky real quick. Right now I'm looking at one definition, but I'm sure there's multiple. So let me... No, nah, no problem. No worries at all. Let me see. It's it's pulling up. It's just it's just a little slow. While this is doing, what it's doing you want to go ahead and uh start to share your screen. So I have it here, it just popped up. So the first definition American, it would be a native of America. And we actually have the fourth definition would be prisoner of war. A person, usually a soldier who is captured by or surrenders to the enemy in wartime. Uh, we have school, any institution at which instruction is given in a particular manner. And lastly, education and enlightening experience. So that's it. Yeah, uh, at the end of class, you mind forwarding that to me? Yeah, so I'm still having the, the past uh, definitions. Not a problem. All right, go ahead, share my screen. Where you want to kick it off at? Uh, we can start with uh, the, the uh, let's get it clear, the continent of Europe, and then go right into the 13 colonies and then go to the American removal uh, map. Before we get to that, let's go to the file Europe, one more to the right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're just doing a refresher real quick, just so everybody can get their minds right as we recover. Right. We can see where the United Kingdom is or England, if you want to hover your mouse over that uh, island. Where we at? Right, right here. 
Mm -hmm. So that would be the United Kingdom and England. Does, mm -hmm. does that look like the land North America? Not at all. Okay. We see uh, if you can put your mouse on France, does that look like the land of North America? Far from it. Much smaller. Okay. And then you see Spain right below France. Right in this area where Spain at. To your left. Right. The gray area. Right. The gray. All right here. Uh huh. There we go. Boom. And so, Chief of Cavalry, uh, any one of y'all can share on it. We just want to be clear Europeans are not Americans. We have to understand that. Y'all want to share anything on that? Looking at this map, understanding that it's not North America, the landmass you're looking at? Yeah, I can confirm that. Yeah. So you have people that come from here actually claiming to be American, right? So that's yeah. birthright right theft. You're just taking people's identity theft. Hmm? So it's basically just identity theft. Right. Right in your face on national TV. So go to the 13 colony image, the, the, the one next to the left on the left. Can you make that a little bigger? Hold on. Well, mm, I think this is as big as I'm gonna get without me. Disrupting it. There we go. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. So, so we can see Georgia was the last colony Born. that the United Kingdom created, and we can clearly see where the Mississippi River is. That's that purple line that goes all the way up into what we now believe is Canada. Right. That's Dang, I know it went that far. Hmm? I didn't know it went that far. Yeah, it, it runs just like the Nile River. The, the Nile and the Mississippi River have the same characteristics. They flow. You would think the Mississippi flows from top to bottom. It actually flows up. It goes from the Gulf of Mexico up. Um, so we can see here that by 1830, the American Removal Act jumps off. And so you got Europeans that are going to try to push the Americans on the other side of that river. And they're going to try to basically claim everything east of the Mississippi River. That's what we just read last week in the American Removal Act. Uh, can you show the image uh, of the trail they took on the American Removal Act? We can close. The... Where am I going right now? Hold on. The American okay. Review Act map where it shows how people came out of Florida through Louisiana, how everybody went into Oklahoma. This little thing up top is killing me. You gotta click on one of your tabs. I'm trying to get this out of the way. Okay, right there. All right. So Georgia was established in 1733. A hundred years later, 1830, the United States government, which was established by Europeans, they made a bold move and decided that they're gonna move as many Americans into Oklahoma as they possibly could. During that time, the, Seminole, the first Seminole War popped off in 1823, which was the Florida, Georgia area, because Georgia was Florida until the Europeans started occupying it. So now the first Seminole War has been fought. The Treaty of Moultrie Creek comes after that first Seminole War. Seven years later, Congress for the United States government votes to move all Americans west of the Mississippi River in the Indian Removal Act, which we call the American Removal Act. Now, we're going to go to each nation's website because five nations were sent in Oklahoma. We can see those nations if you put your 
Cherokee, Creek, Chickasaw, Seminole, Choctaw. So can you pull up those respective websites for those nations that are now in Oklahoma? And this is when our bloodline split on this land. So we're on the Choctaw Nation. Look at these two gentlemen right here. All right. Okay. So they're claiming to be American. Mm. Does it say anything on their home page? Should say something on their home page about the uh, uh, history and culture. Let's see. Click on the history and culture. Let's see what they're saying. Just briefly. Uh, scroll down a little bit more. Language traditions. Scroll down some more. All the things our ancestors got to keep moving towards these reservations. So map of, the, map of the Choctaw Nation. Let's click on that. Uh, scroll down. Looks like I can download it. Yeah, we don't want to download it. I thought they were going to say something on their home page, but nevertheless, we have to understand we're prisoners of war on our own land because those that went on the Trail of Tears, they were able to keep their language, nationality, and form of government. This is one of the nations right here the Choctaw Nation. You gotta ask yourself as a prisoner of war in North America that have been reclassified through the census as Negro, colored, black, Afro-American, and now the attempt is for people of color. Why are other prisoners of war, quote unquote, black people never talking about this? This is your family. Why, why, has, why have, I've never seen that in school. Nobody's ever talked about these nations that sit in Oklahoma right now. Mm. Can we go to another one? So we did, that's Choctaw. We got five nations. You got the Chickasaw Nation. So now we're on the Chickasaw. So for those that don't understand, you got the United States government, which is a nation, and you got five other nations. Uh, thank you for joining us for this Chickasaw Nation. And you got five other nations, as well as the United States government, on the land North America. There were thousands of nations in North America. They consolidated them down to five. Those that went on the Trail of Tears into Oklahoma, that's our family. Those that did not go west of the Mississippi River and fought and caught hell through Jim Crow, black codes, segregation, civil rights era, war on drugs, war on crime, mass incarceration, school to prison pipeline, gentrification. We descend from those people that did not go west of the Mississippi River. This is really not hard. The question is why aren't scholars stepping off their hot, stepping off their pedestal admitting you're wrong. You're wrong. You got us looking at a whole nother landmass when this happened 170 years ago. Anything you want to say on that, Chief Black Coat? No, again, that's what we need to get to a point where the European admits all its wrongs. You know, that the confusion still remains today. We're still distracted by Africa and other parts of the world because we're relying so much on their education or their indoctrination. So once we can break through that veil, the European has to own up. You're not, you're not American. We don't even have to get into the nations. You're not American. You showed that map, you know, England, Spain, and go back to it. France, in two different continents. So I think you had a good uh a little good, you know, um, understanding of it too. But yeah, you so know, yeah. You see today it's just. Okay, so go back to Cherokee real quick because we don't want to scroll too fast. Okay. okay. So on the Cherokee, scroll down a little bit. So this is the Cherokee Nation's website. Mm -hmm. Right there. 
OCO. So when you hear people saying OCO, they're claiming a nation. Prisoners of war need to understand that. There are people that are reclaiming their nationality. So when you hear that word OCO, everyone, understand what they're saying, their catchwords. Now let's just look at what they say here. The Cherokee Nation is a sovereign tribal government. Upon settling in Indian territory, present day Oklahoma, after the Indian Removal Act, the Cherokee people established a new government in what is now the city of Tahlequah, Oklahoma. A constitution was adopted on September 6, 1839, 68, year, 68 years prior to Oklahoma statehood. Now, they recreated the Cherokee Nation in 1839. Can you go back to the uh, map of the Indian Removal Act? Oh, I think it's your Google. Yep. Yeah, your Google. Yep. Now, understand, can you put your arrow over what we now know as Georgia? Understand, if your family, if your bloodline comes from what we now know as Georgia, that's where the original Cherokee Nation was. They, re they recreated another Cherokee Nation in 1838. The American Removal Act is in 1830. Look at the timeline. We're not skipping around. Mm -hmm. We're walking you down the timeline. 1830, the American Removal Act, the Indian Removal Act was signed by the United States Government Congress. Eight years later, the Cherokee Nation is established in Indian Territory. So the question is, what happened to the nation of people that were in Georgia? Because the mm -hmm. Cherokee originated in what we now know as Georgia. Right. You follow me? Go ahead. Do you want to build on that? It's just no, lies. Right. You build a question up or you brought the question up. What happened to those people born in Georgia, known as the Cherokee Nation? What happened to those people that didn't push across the Mississippi River? You know, we look around today. We're still here. Our ancestors continue to fight. Um, protecting their land or standing up what they believed in. Um, and we can see it today. It's just that disconnect. We don't understand. We, we from out here. We ain't come from, we've been here. So once you see in these maps, though, it kind of just, it's right in our faces, you know, Cherokee Creek. This is the Indian removal map. It's, just, it's right here. So let me see where we at. Let it's me. almost like it's an internal battle. It's almost like there's been so much literature put out that we were slaves on slave ships that when you present the mm -hmm. record and the facts, it's almost like you got to fight amongst your own people because people have made hundreds of right. thousands of dollars with this African slave. Oh, yeah. And again, maybe they didn't know. The archives are there. You know, the one thing the European do is account for everything. Mm -hmm. So they have accounted for all of their enslaved persons, um, not from Africa, you document it. So small percent from Africa, from my knowledge, but majority of the people that got caught up in the wrong towns or got caught up in the chain gang was Americans, fellow Americans. Now, nations. So what two nations websites? We went to Cherokee Nation. We went to we, uh, we hit Choctaw. We hit Chickasaw. We just left off of Cherokee Nation out of Georgia. All right. Now we got a Muskegee Creek Nation. Okay, so this is the Muskegee Nation. Now we now scroll back up to the top real quick. This is what our ancestors were able to keep, which is what we lost. Look at the form of government they had. They have government, they have internal affairs, yeah. they have independent agencies, they have commerce, they have culture and history, they have education. Understand those that sold out and went into Oklahoma, that's the benefit. We, our family, we're the realists of the bloodline because we fought, but look at what we lost. So we're trying to grab on to something that's on the other side of the Atlantic. We're trying to grab on the African culture well, you got our marriage. We got our family right here on this land. Right here. Living on reservations or out of living in ghettos. They pay no taxes to the United States government because they're not citizens of this government. So how did we become mm -hmm. citizens of a government 
that has segregated us, mass incarcerated us? How do you pay taxes? How do you ensure that that government stays up? Contract with them through our birth certificates, social security card, signing off on it. All of that. Hospitals, yeah, all of that. Prisoners of war. Over time, they just occupied you because we became a nationless group of people. When these right. when these nations went into Oklahoma, our ancestors at some point still knew government structure. Mm. But over time, as, as new generations came and we started going into the European school system, we've lost any semblance of, of, of structure or nation. And then they took it out of the school civics, probably after my generation. So now you're looked at as foreign when you walk into a court and you can file your own documents or you can file what, you know, you're supposed to have to pay a lawyer for that. So they, they, they keep dumbing society down. Right. Anything you want to build on that? No, I think you just said something about paying lawyers and all these fees to claim your real uh, lineage. Um, it's ridiculous. You can't. You, why, one, why are you paying tithes or money to any organization to claim who you are if you're naturally born on this land? Who? No one can tell you where you're from. No one can tell you where your ancestors are from, your lineage, your bloodline. So. It's asinine to sit here and know these people go on here and, and, and try to sign up to be in the club. That's ridiculous. So can we go back to that previous website real um, quick? Which one? The removal? Uh-uh. The uh, nation that you were just on. Muskegee or Seminole? Uh, Muskegee. Okay. Okay, scroll down a little bit. Self-governed Native American tribe located in Omegi, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Now, go ahead, finish. I uh, want to read the rest of that right quick. Yeah, that's right, because that, that, that's, yeah. So it's a self-governed Native American tribe located in Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. MCN is one of the five civilized tribes in the, and is the fourth largest tribe in the U.S. with 86,100 citizens. The government side of the tribe is made of an executive and legislative branch and a tribal court system. Sounds familiar to our regular um, three-branch system. MCN is a diverse entity with many facets, false facets, such as cultural tourism, gaming, business, and higher learning. So cultural tourism, pretty much museums of our history, which isn't a positive history. You know, what are they talking about? A trail of tears. Gaming, I'm, I'm going to guess that's, uh, or educatedly guess, special casinos and gambling. And then business or gaming could be farmland, I'm not sure but it's uh, also businesses and higher learning institutions. So they're self-government. They have pretty much on these reservations, a whole society or a whole uh, economy. Nation. It's a nation. It's a nation. It's a nation. nation. There you go. Yep. It's a nation. Chief, uh, Chief Akibu, uh, what we're doing is just going to the homepage of each of the five nations that went into Oklahoma. Uh -huh. so you can see what it reads right here about the Muscogee Creek Nation is a self-governed Native American tribe. And MSN is one of the five civilized tribes and the fourth largest tribe in the US with 86,000 citizens. The government side of the tribe is made up of an executive branch, a legislative body and a tribal court system. Okay, what, okay. What would you say, basically what we're talking about is, this is when our bloodline split when some went to Oklahoma and some remained fighting east of the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at other nations on this land and we're never told about this. Did you ever learn in school about these five nations that reside in Oklahoma? No, I didn't. I've heard of them in school, but it was never in depth. It was just really about the um, Trail of Tears and everything. but they never got into the nations that are there. No, they never really like with, I don't even, even remember hearing about nations in school. Um, 
the only thing I can recall from my grade, excuse me, from uh, from my grade school is Trail of Tears. So, and that was just narrowed down to Georgia, of course, coming out of Georgia and how the how the chair condition was on the trail of tears pushing I heard to give you a kiss you didn't say that I don't know it's just a place across the Mississippi River. All right, you want to go to the next nation? What would that Seminole's the last what you want to do? You going to Seminole now? Yeah, Seminole. Okay. What's to say on their home page? Uh click on government. Just real quick. Okay, so it's gonna give you that. Never mind. Scroll down just a little bit where it says the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. All right. You wanna read that? There you go. The Seminole Nation tribal jurisdiction area is located in South Central Oklahoma, approximately 45 miles east of Oklahoma City. The Seminole Nation tribe complex is located in the town of Wakoya, Owewoka, Oklahoma. We woke lies at the junction of US 270 and Oklahoma Highway 56, approximately 30 miles southeast of the town of Shawnee. We woke is also the site of several Seminole Nation programs and services. The Mukusuki Mission, which includes tribal offices, recreational areas, industrial and commercial areas, and a cultural area is located two miles south and two miles west of the city of Seminole. The Seminole were moved, the Seminole were removed to Indian territory following the Treaty of Payne's Landing in 1832. They were eventually granted a reservation, but after subsequent 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 land, subsequent land secession, secessions, the lands were allotted following the Seminole Agreement of 1909. Today, the tribe owns 372 acres of federal trust land and approximately 53 acres of free simple land. An additional 35, 443 allotted acres supplemented, supplement the tribal land base. With the future of limitless potential and the determined 21st century narrative, the people of the Seminole Nation hold a steadfast tendency and building up families, culture preservation, safe communities, municipal relationships, educational opportunities, while ensuring strong economic growth and standards of living. Okay. Standard of living. So we're about to start on the Treaty of uh, 1832, Payne's Land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're about to start on that, but what jumps out is you see how they're specific for this group of people? Even though they only got 372 acres of land, that's not a lot of land when you had all of Georgia, all of right Florida, now. right? And it's laid out right here. But you see how they're specifically for their people. Each nation is specifically for their people. I got a question for prisoners of war, AKA black people. Why does nobody ever talk specifically to you? Why, why do you never get anything specific to you? Why is it always, why are you grouped in with, with, with gays and, and, and illegal immigrants and refugees from Afghanistan? Why they do you keep, they have to keep that wall, that veil of, of who the real Americans aren't. So instead of educating the American, allowing the American to know who they are, we're gonna just create this entire fictional world with all of these different type of entities. So the real American one also now that you got real Americans pretending to be all of these other entities, you can now be when that ain't got nothing to do, like your ancestors didn't practice this type of anything. Why are you trying to practice it? What's your uh, thought on that chief of Keeba line? How is it that these five nations can do specifically for their group of people only? Mm -hmm. Why is it that prisoners of war, why do we never get anything specific? What's your thought on that? Mm. All right, another thing. Pardon me for like, um, I feel like part of me feels because some of these people, like some of the tribes, like they actually, some of them, of course, went 
and just left the land, but some of them just stuck there and fought. So I feel like even just them fighting was like, okay, we might as well give them just a little bit of something. Even with like the Haitians, um, they stuck together and fought. So they still to this day have a very tight knit um, like connection with each other. But I just feel like the fact that they were willing to fight with each other instead of just all going with the plan of just leaving their own land. Well, a little bit more. The question was, why doesn't the government do for black people as a, the same way these nations do on their reservations? Um, to give black people any type of uh, tangibles, you have to acknowledge who they are. You would have to pay that ties to that nation. You just can't pay it to black. I don't know where that's at. I don't know what that is. So to actually acknowledge this group of people and to actually give them something, in the first 100 days, you would have to acknowledge who they are. You would have to say and account for it, who that group of people truly are in the, on this land in America. So that's why I would say another reason is why don't black people get anything? One, we don't know who we are. And then two, they would have to admit to who we are because when they give certain people or a certain race things, they acknowledge, uh, they acknowledge the Asians get this, Mexicans get this or whoever they are, they would have to acknowledge the American getting this from that nation or whatever nation that person came from, women or men. All right, you want to build a little bit more, Chief Akibalon, on why we never get anything specific from the government, whereas the government, because nations have to deal with nations. Right. So, so United States government dealing with the Seminole Nation, allotted them specific land and specific things. Why do you feel we don't get anything specific from this United States government nation? We don't have a voice, I don't feel like. I feel like we don't speak up enough in terms of like a singular voice. I feel like we all, it's too many of us trying to speak for everyone and that just, that doesn't help us really at all. Just like if there's a chief of a nation, then there needs to be one chief or a few chiefs. But it's like there's a thousand chiefs trying to speak for a million people, and that's not always going to work out. So I just feel like we don't have a um, we don't have a um, our goals aren't really streamlined. Like we don't have a collective goal. It don't seem like. Yeah, so they have everything here. Yeah, and so the reason why I'm asking this question is because the reality is we have, we can prop up the highly schooled of our group, but the reality is we're nationless. The reason why we don't get anything specific from the United States government is because we were denationalized at this point. Can you go back to that seminal uh, Trail of Tears map? This is when we got denationalized right here. When, when those that went west of the Mississippi and went into Oklahoma, they went into Oklahoma with agreement as nations speaking, nations have to talk to nations. So these five nations were talking to the United States government and they did get something, even though they lost damn near all of North America, they did get Indian territory. Those of us that did not go west, we got denationalized over time. Yeah. Because they were able to take our lands through hanging us, through burning us, burning us. They were able to wrongfully incarcerate us and get us to work in uh, prison camps, you know, uh, what they call a uh, chain gang. Uh, they were able to segregate us and, 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 and make us drink out of colored water fountains. We weren't citizens of the United States government until 1965. So we got denationalized in 1830 to 1840 when they were moving people into Oklahoma. Everybody that didn't leave, you were just on your own. So I got family members that fought in World War I, World War II. They couldn't get the GI Bill. They didn't get, they didn't get government benefits because we weren't citizens. And I think a lot of us don't want to admit that harsh reality that we didn't become citizens until 1964. They gave Negroes the right to vote and the right to hold office. 
and the right to participate in state, local, and federal government. Prior to that, you just a prisoner of war. And they're rolling what they gave in 1964 back. They're taking your voting rights now. You've got nothing specific from this administration in a world pandemic. And you said nations deal with nations. So everybody that resides in the Florida Territory, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Louisiana, or yep, Louisiana. So for those people that did not push back or push left of the Mississippi River, how do they nationalize themselves? How do they regain their nation and actually deal with this U.S. corporation to for them to acknowledge all their wrongs? How do we get there? Great question. So what we have to do is reclaim our, re, honor our ancestors and reclaim Cherokee Nation, reclaim Seminole Nation, reclaim Cher because when you go to their websites, they're showing that these nations were all established after the American Removal Act. That's a lie. You were going to war with the nations before the American Removal Act. Right. Way before. Yeah, you can't see, a, you can't declare something a war unless it's two nations. Are you with me? Right. So when prisoners of war last year in 2020, when they were protesting and, and, and burning down stuff, they'll never call that a war. Why? Because you're an unorganized group of people. So you'll get classified as having riots. Mm. You see, mm -hmm. you have to be organized for, uh, you have to have a nation to go to war and you have to have a nation to have treaties. We got denationalized during the Trail of Tears. And I'm glad we brought these websites up, these nations websites up today, because one, this is real. So now we can see with our own eyes that these nations did exist. Well, they, these are and these are only five nations that were recognized. There were thousands, I'm sure, probably way more. But right now, you know, doing the homework, these are the nations. This is how they get then this is how they deal with each other. This is how they are able to speak and stand on what they believe in. And U.S. corporation have dialogue with them and they, you know, receive tangibles, whatever, whatever, whatever. But this is the nation. Hold, you know, the website's right here. Just looking back at this map again. So if I go a step further and, and, and again, what we're doing is we're just doing the work just out of love of our people. But at the same time, we're challenging all those uh, let, let's just have a healthy challenge amongst uh, amongst researchers, regardless of your title and your letters before your name, because we all prisoners of war. So, yeah. so why are we bragging on degrees when we all prisoners of war? What your economic status got to do with the fact that we're a nationless group of people? So, mm. what, so part of the reason why I do this every weekend is to expose. Let's get down to the real and stop playing these games. Right. They've built a fake government. Monopoly. The United States government in 2021, September 5th, it's fake. The money is fake. The people claiming to be American are not American. It's all fake. When the de jure people stand up and bring back de jure government, this whole thing collapses. Mm. This whole thing is make-believe ever since the 1960 uh, civil rights. I'm sorry, after the Civil War. And they made, they brought up a democracy. And then they bring in the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. They made Negroes persons. Come on, y'all. People ain't stupid. Persons are LLCs. All right. Persons are S Corps and C Corps. They didn't make you, they couldn't, they couldn't give you human status. Why? Because they're not from the land. So the whole government is fake, including the money, which is why you can yeah. identify with whatever the hell you want to be right now. We ain't make believe. Go ahead, Chief of Keep Alive. I was about to say, and you really like there's like there's literally no way for you to tell someone else if they're human or not. Like it makes no sense. And then <laughs> with like the uh birth certificates and stuff, how those are bonds. Well, I think they're backed by bonds. I think I said that incorrectly, but um they're tied to bonds and stuff like that. And how so I've heard that you can sell your birth certificate for a whole bunch of money and stuff. It's just all based on the money and um it's like a Ah, what's that thing called? It's kind of like a, it's basically like imprisonment through like the lack of knowledge and then just fake money. But it's real 
because it's kind of every it's been made everybody's reality so it's like subjectively real to everybody so it kind of makes it sort of real in the real world if that makes any sense if i'm saying that correctly yeah they've dumped everybody what you're saying is they've made everybody believe that federal reserve notes are money when really gold and silver is money around the world yeah yeah yeah, yeah basically because yeah. everybody has this idea that like having a bunch even just like having a bunch of money in cash how we think that's like money for real or value valuable it's like that's not real value when you can buy watches that are twenty thousand dollars that appreciate more than the money that you have in cash. Mm. I just want to tie in Kenneth to this conversation we're having right now. Uh, Kenneth. Oh yeah. So the inventor for today was uh, Kenneth oh, Berkeley. Okay. Yep, invented the three D glasses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we we are playing a three D Monopoly game. You know, from that board game. So we're just playing that game. Mortgages, mm -hmm. changing this. Fiat laying it in 3D. Um, the majority of us are looking up because a lot of information I'm seeing now on the internet and from Instagram to Twitter, people are getting in the know of this golden system. Mm -hmm. In the information age. And that's it's a good and bad thing because with being in the information age, there's so much information that there's a lot of misinformation, but there's mm -hmm. also a lot of like um correct information going out as well that's why i like what we do we pull the document and we just share the screen so everybody else is with us yes. yeah like, yeah it's factual fun. evidence right and, and just it would be different if my teacher is in high school uh the natives weren't here first or something like that and they showed me facts yeah, just to, just to add in, I know a lot of people that are from the landmass Africa that are, you know, operate small businesses. And right. my challenge to anybody is ask somebody that actually came from Africa, have immigration papers, ask them where they're from. They, they will never tell you Africa. They will tell you the nation that right. they come from. So again, prisoners of war, we have been denationalized. Mm, we, I'm glad you we, just said everybody that. recognized nations. You a, per, a person from Ethiopia is not gonna say I'm from Africa. They're gonna say, mm -hmm. no, my people, I, I'm from Ethiopia. Nation. But right. they don't talk like that to most niggas mm. because niggas don't understand nationality. But I have those kind of conversations with them, and they have they always say, You my brother, you you like my brother, because we I'll don't understand. Go ahead, Chief Chief Alon. Yeah. That wasn't me, my bad. You good. It's like we, we've we been denationalized so long, we think everybody plays this color game. When they don't, everybody honors their nationality. And we're getting back to our natural, you know, uh, nationality, but we're still playing respectfully, you know, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, whatever the European established, we're now claiming that. We have to get all the way back because, like you said, if you talk to an African, they're going straight back to their nation. Right. They'll never tell you I'm from Africa. No. And They'll never say that. No. Nope. Never. And so we have to then ask ourselves, why are these scholars that are prisoners of war, a.k.a. Black, why do they keep referring to Africa when people from Africa don't even refer to themselves as African? Make it make sense, y'all. Right. He's going to tell you I'm from Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm from Nigeria. I'm from Ethiopia. I'm from Afghanistan. Yep. He's never going to tell you I'm from Africa. Yep. So why are we on a whole nother landmass talking mm -hmm. about we from Africa? And, and here's the icing on the cake, Chief Black Coat. We'll claim we from Africa when your great great grandmother was buried on this land, and you'll know she Indian, aka no. American. You'll know she American and still claim African. And, and and that's the trouble we deal with. I think I had I think I spoke to you in private about the young lady on my Twitter telling me that my grandmother was probably from. Western Africa 
And I'm like, how are you through the internet telling me where I come from? So you're so indoctrinated right now. You're so sold on your education that we just all came from West Africa. And now you're out here telling people where they are. No, sweetheart. No, 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 no. That's not how that works. So to be honest with you, what, what has to happen is work because we've been denationalized. So first we have to reclaim our form of government, right? Which is yeah. an American form of government. So you got a Cherokee nation in Oklahoma established in 1838. It needs to be another Cherokee nation for, or the lost Cherokee nation. That's why we named the channel the lost Confederacy. This, there was a form of government that collapsed in the Southeast region of North America. Nobody wants to talk about Nobody wants to talk about the Indian Removal Act. But you can't tell a lie straight because you got these nations with websites and they're talking about that nation established in 1838. Well, how the hell you went to war with the, Euro with the United States government bef before that? On the other side of the Mississippi. Let me say that again. How can your nation be established in Oklahoma in 1838, but you were at war with the United States government before 1838 on the other side of the Mississippi River? It's a it's lost rewritten history. Can you go back to the uh, removal uh, map one more time, Chief Black Coat? How can people, can you put your mouse over the Georgia, Florida area? You got Cherokee Wars and Seminole Wars going on on this side of right North here. America. That means those nations were originally there. Right. Now put your mouse in Oklahoma. Now you got all those five nations. Would you see these trails on this map? Now those five nations are saying that they oh, were man. established. Yeah, now they were established after the American Removal Act. So they're gonna act like they weren't in war with the United States government before it. What happened to the people that did not go to Oklahoma? That's the question. What happened to the people that did not go west of the Mississippi to Oklahoma? What happened? What happened to them? Right here, you know, continue to fight continue to hold the homeland down, continue to do business with like relatives and just stayed out of the way, I believe, you know, down in the backwoods, swamp areas, swamp territories. But, you know, denationalized. As Chief of Kibalon, I, I want to, Chief of Kibalon, what happened to the Americans if everybody went to Oklahoma? Okay, I, can, I don't even know how to tell this lie, but Let's say everybody went to Oklahoma. Then how do you get a second and third Seminole War and a Civil War? Yeah, you can't have a second and third. <laughs> you can't have a second and third if, and the Civil War. Like, if, if there was nobody there, you can't have a second and third. Hey, you didn't confuse yourself so much that you really started thinking you was American and then now you find each other. <laughs> the only thing that people need to know is that people just need to read this stuff. But that's the issue is that this isn't main, like this isn't main, like uh, not, yeah, it's not mainstream knowledge. So it's like, we can't blame people, but also people yeah. gotta notice. Cause this would destroy the whole narrative of the United States government. It would destroy the whole narrative. Yeah. It'll flip the script. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that Chief of Keep He said, don't be hard on the people cause they don't know. And, mm -hmm. and that's part of the reason why we are doing this when, you know, uh, yeah, but then you got to ask yourself, why you got all these scholars that never did this? But that's the thing, though. The scholars, that was made by Carnegie and all these people that were the um, robber barons who controlled the um, education and controlled the medicine fields and all of that. So they had control of what everybody was learning. So they just they had a plan of indoctrination and they worked. And now be getting a degree is like the best thing to do, but getting a degree is not necessarily the smart, not even, it's not the smartest thing to do if you're trying to search for something specific when it comes to like your true history on this line. So, so let me ask you something on that, Chief Akiba line. Do you believe that black quote unquote prisoner of war scholars, do you believe they sold us out and purposely did not teach this? No. 
not completely no because I don't think that like just like what I said I don't think that everybody like if you don't know this that's like if you don't know iron is hot and you touched it you can't really be mad that you touched it because you didn't know that you that it was hot so if you didn't know this before prior to becoming a scholar and becoming a teacher let's just say in this let's just say in like the 80s or 90s that's cool well, like in the 80s or 90s when um I, I'm not gonna say everything was just amazing but it wasn't as tense as the um, civil rights movement and everything. And everything was kind of chill. Back then, the teachers probably didn't think anything of like true, true history in college or anything like that. or think anything super differently about what they were teaching in the school. So them teaching what they knew isn't necessarily what we know now, at least, because now we have this new knowledge. We have the ability to go on the Internet and search through all these things. But back then, they just had books and stuff. That's a good answer. Yeah, he got a great point on that, and I can I can testify to that. that if, it, if, it, if it wasn't the internet, if we didn't have the internet right now, there's no way we could do this because it costs too much money, and you would have to physically go to these libraries. Yeah. That's the era I come from. There was no there was no internet, so we we had library cards. So right. you would have to go to Washington D.C. and actually go to the Library of Congress and actually make copies of this information out of their libraries, right? And then you would have to go to the Oklahoma and go to Oklahoma State University, and then you would have to make copies of all the treaties. That's another key for y'all. I'm just going to drop that. All the treaties are in Oklahoma. Every treaty on this land is coming out of Oklahoma University. Now in the information age, we can just download it. So again, I don't want to get into the Moors and all this and that because I haven't read all thousand treaties but out of the treaties that i've read i've yet to see that nation recognized on this land that nation came out of morocco which is on the land of africa but the point is chief of Kibalon was right we live in a different world now where you don't have to physically go to brick and mortar places to actually get the information you can go straight to their website but we coming up we got five more minutes uh so we basically we did the american removal act last week now we're just reiterating just showing you how both nate how six nations align you got the five nations in oklahoma they're claiming to be established after the american removal act and they're acting like nothing was established in the southeast region of the uh, of, of north america prior to the American Removal Act. So basically, like I said, it's like a family disowning one side of its family. They just want to act like we don't exist. And once I started to get into this information as I got older, it's amazing how they act like we just don't exist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like they're literally letting us roll the narrative of just being black, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah, they'll even, they'll even disrespect us in our face and call us black. And like, hold on, bro. What? But when they're both scared, the mm. nation, the nations in Oklahoma and the United States government, they're both scared of us. And I know that sounds crazy for me to say that, but why do they make sure that you play on their sports teams? Mm -hmm. College football just started. Why they make sure that they got people from the Creek Confederacy mm -hmm. from the South? Why they make sure that you and all their athletics? Mm -hmm. They'd rather be on your side and manipulate you than for you to realize who they are and compete against them. They don't want to compete against us. And our family that sold us out, they're scared that we wake up and realize that they sold us out. Mm. Now that's, a, that's a tough one right there, what you just said. It's the real. Yeah. Nothing's came out of Oklahoma that, that, that we follow. Mm. We follow the prisoners of wars of the people that didn't tap out. That's how blues, rock and roll, rap music, hip hop, all that's, that, none of that started in Oklahoma. Right. Mm. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> right. It's a harsh reality. <clears throat> they are acting as if their nation started in 1838. James Browns, so much culture. Yeah. So it's 
we got to recover. And that's what this whole channel is about. It's about recovering. It's only 200 and less than 250 years ago that we were actually running this land. Ports, creating inventions. Everybody around the world was coming here because we had an easier way of life because we were creating things to make life easier. I just want to pull a little something I just pulled. I just finished watching Django. Great film, if anybody's seen it. My favorite Love movie. It. Right. So in Django, I know the whole slave narrative is its main um, idea. <clears throat> but as we know now today, an allegory. Um, but I did notice, like, because you just said, everybody came here to bite off all we have discovered, created. I noticed in Django, alongside with one of the, I don't know what you would call them, the European, there was an Asian. She, she, she or he had the red mask on. So that just, that was a hint from Quentin Tarantino saying, yeah, the Asians was over here too, trying to get a piece of everything while the European was as well. And they somehow made a truce or treaty with each other to dominate this land. Just a little hint, just something I just took from that film. <clears throat> Yeah, it's the richest land on planet Earth. Everybody says Africa is the richest. No, it's actually America. America. So, after the adventures <laughs> that we go over every Sunday, there's no, it's no, there's no debate anymore. There's no debate. <laughs> People look at me crazy when I say the Django is my favorite movie. It's my favorite movie for one reason. It's the only black superhero movie mm. that I've ever seen in my life. You can't name another movie where the black guy kills all the white people and gets his woman back. You right. can't name a movie. It's the only black superhero movie I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, all of the many uh, memorable scenes, but my one of my favorite scenes is when Django actually kills Quentin Tarantino and them three people after he sold them on the fact that there was 11,500 and that black brother that was sitting in that cage told the truth. And then when Django rides off, he kind of smiles, but that's the same dude when he was like, stop looking at me, nigga. I'm gonna give you something to look at. That same brother was inspired. Like, man, that nigga different. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And and yeah, it's it's that got his girl for real. And most people will look at me and look like you like that movie. And it's like if you can it's if you can't movie. get past if you can't get past the vivid scenes right. that they show, like when he watched that guy get ate up by the dog. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say this. When he sat right there and let that uh let them rednecks eat that man up with that dog, when he was with, with the Django as a free person, what he was really saying is, yeah, a nigga is worthless. Think mm -hmm. about that, people. He knew it. A nigga is worthless. You can do with your nigga what you want to do with him. He ain't worth nothing. He can't think. Mm. He he useless. Bruh, we gotta wake up. That that's and see, that's how this society. I'm not gonna say the society. I'm not gonna say everybody, everybody not stupid. People ain't suicidal out here, but the media makes it seem like we're all niggas. Right. Which which a lot of people will get hurt if they believe if they walk around with that narrative that we all just don't know what time it is and we don't know who we are, it, it, it's, yeah. gonna, it's gonna be ugly. Right. I mean <clears throat> YouTube can break that narrative now. There's so many scholars on YouTube speaking like this putting information out our channel the other channels so this whole narrative that we're all just lost like you said could get you hurt um we're not lost no more we're, we're, this is this is the steps being taken to reestablish our nation reestablish our confederacy once we all start to click in like hold on what what chief black coat chief alligator chief quad what are them doing down there let's invite them to the summit and then we get that pen going, but the stepping stones. I like how you always say we're gonna bite the elephant on one bite at a time. This is that. <clears throat> yep. So we'll do it uh, next week. I'll do uh, whatever is needed. But if I'm a volunteer for something, what I'll do the steps. Okay. Um, I'll do legal definitions. Points. I gotta work. Back in my life. You got to work? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we'll play it by ear. We've had um, a lot of different people have some different things going on the last couple of weeks. Right, right. Uh, 
so yeah we'll just make it happen nothing stops uh i think we did a great build today we'll go into the treaty of uh Payne's landing of 1832 uh we'll go into that treaty next week we just basically just just built on the American Removal Act and just exposed the lies. So you got five. If you didn't learn anything from this video, now you know you got five nations in Oklahoma that are acting as if they were never in the Southeast region of North America. And the question that I have for everybody, if everybody went into Oklahoma, how was there a, how was there a second Seminole War, a third Seminole War, and then a civil war? if all the Americans, AKA black people, went into Oklahoma? Somebody answer that for me. How did that happen? Y'all make that make sense. Yeah. That's a great question. What would be your answer to that? <clears throat> um, it's a lot, you know? Not everybody went left of the Mississippi River. And ancestors continue to fight, bringing that second Seminole War, third Seminole War, forcing that civil war saying you know what <laughs> right right let's just get it cracking let's just get it <laughs> let's just stop playing you really think it's sweet <laughs> can we do it if they if they never left even if you breaking up chief of keep They left it just makes you realize that the people they left, that means you were taking them to keep them. All right, come back with that again because you were breaking up. Yeah, one more time. Oh, man, I did. I said, uh, oh, yeah, if, if, if they were already gone outside, like, past the Mississippi, that just proves that the Europeans were terrorizing. And I'm just saying this for the sake of argument. That just means that they were terrorizing them because if you go and have a war with somebody else that's already then left the land that you wanted, you're basically just following them and starting other wars just to start it. Mm -hmm. So either way, it's a lose-lose for them. I didn't like it. Okay, you're saying even if they're, okay, now that, that does make sense and that, that mm -hmm. makes sense because mm -hmm. they really didn't know what was west of the Mississippi. So when they followed those people to Oklahoma, then that's when you get the gold rush and they started realizing, oh, it's, it's different kind of resources. You got a point there, Chief of Keebalon, as they were whooping their ass and they were running and they were chasing them, they start finding out, oh, uh, what was the um, west of the Mississippi River? What's the animal I'm thinking about? It's, the it, bison. It's, the bison, yeah, they just- bison. Bison. Huh? Bison. 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 Right. That's when you get your, your uh, I'm trying to, it's a name I'm trying to think of. Um, the frontier. That's what I'm trying to say. They call it the frontier. That, like Keith Keebalon just said, as they were chasing those people west of the Mississippi, then they go into the frontier. They're like, damn, it's a whole nother land that they didn't even know about. So he, that's a point. Yeah. They didn't know. Interesting. So yeah, we'll 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 kick it off. Great meeting. Uh, yeah, just asking the questions, man. Asking the questions because it is not making sense. Somebody lying. Anything else you want to say before we close it down, Chief Black Coat, Chief of Keep Line? I think today we we did it again as far as proof of claim. Um, and next week we're gonna have some more. All right, Chief of Keep Line. Anything you want to say? great work um i think that we just getting better at breaking it down for people instead of just reading it verbatim i think we make them more uh we make it, we connect them more dots in a better way breaking it more palatable like school like we're the teachers now and we're just putting that information out <laughs> yeah I like it all right, and you would have this up here, chart in like Ireland history. We're gonna leave that alone, but that is very interesting, right? I wanted to find Ireland. That's what I was looking for to show exactly where Ireland is, but yeah, it's, it's real small in here somewhere. It won't let me. Oh, yes, it will. Got Sweden, there Ireland. 
Okay, yeah. So it's got its own little peninsula as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Island, I mean island. All right, so we'll shut it down. I'm gonna go ahead and, and close it out. We'll do it again next week. And uh, sure. if anything, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. If everybody went to Oklahoma, how do you have a second and third Seminole War and a Civil War? Who were the people fighting those wars? Who was it?